This is USS Zumwalt at approximately 0335 Zulu on April 24, 2019, while conducting routine operations 17 nautical miles off the coast of Camp Pendleton in international waters. At least six unknown UASs made multiple flyovers and circle patterns around the ships. For UN investigators to inspect a shipment of suspected weapon parts found on board and said that they uncovered a missile-shaped object. Panama's president Ricardo Martinelli tweeted a photo which experts identified as an aging Soviet-built radar control system for surface-to-air missiles. Officials said the contraband munitions were hidden under thousands of bags of sugar. Mysterious drone swarms in California waters. A cloaked truth. In 2019, strange drone swarm incidents happened off the coast of Southern California, and the U.S. Navy was involved. New documents reveal what really happened, and it's clear that drones were involved. The incident sparked widespread interest and speculation, with many people thinking the sightings might be UFOs. However, the Navy confirmed that the sightings were actually drones, and a government hearing about unidentified aerial phenomena discussed the incident. A Navy intelligence official, Deputy Director of Naval Intelligence Scott Bray, confirmed that the video footage showed an unmanned aerial system, UAS. Three Navy ships, the U.S. Paul Hamilton, U.S. Bunker Hill, and U.S. Ralph Johnson, reported encounters with the drones, which likely originated from a cargo ship called the MV Bass Strait. The drones flew in a safe and professional manner, but their purpose remains unclear. The Navy suspects that the drones were conducting surveillance on their ships, which raises concerns about national security and the Navy's ability to defend against drone attacks. The incident highlights the growing threat of drone technology in the hands of potential adversaries. The Navy has since implemented new measures to improve its drone defense systems, but the truth about the mysterious drone swarms remains classified. Many questions still linger, such as who was operating the drones and what their ultimate goal was. The investigation continues, but it's clear that this incident has changed the Navy's approach to drone defense and highlights the need for continued vigilance in the face of emerging threats. This is USS Zumwalt at approximately 0335 Zulu on April 24, 2019, while conducting routine operations 17 nautical miles off the coast of Camp Pendleton in international waters. At least six unknown UASs made multiple flyovers and circle patterns around the ships, operating at various altitudes between 300 and 1,000 feet. All appear to fly consistent patterns northwest, east, south, without alteration of course, speed, and altitude. No weapons were observed. Uncovering the Secrets of the Chong Chan Gang In 2014, Panama stopped a North Korean ship called the Chong Chan Gang. On board, they found hidden military weapons, disguised as sugar. The North Korean crew fought hard during the arrest, and the captain tried to kill himself. But things got strange when it turned out the ship came from Cuba, not North Korea. The weapons were also very old, from the mid-20th century. Cuba said they were sending old weapons to North Korea for repair, but officials were doubtful. The crew's strong efforts to hide the cargo raised suspicions. The weapons were old and useless, but the crew acted like they were hiding something valuable. The ship had a history of trouble, having been stopped before for carrying drugs and ammunition, and even attacked by Somali pirates. As officials investigated, they felt like there was more to the story. What was the crew hiding? The Chong Chan gang incident was a bizarre and intriguing event that raised many questions and sparked a diplomatic dispute between North Korea, Cuba, and Panama. The discovery of hidden military weapons on board, disguised as sugar, was only the beginning of a complex web of lies and deceit. As officials dug deeper, they found that the ship's papers were fake, and the crew was instructed to keep the cargo a secret. The crew's desperate attempts to hide the cargo and their willingness to risk their lives and freedom suggested that something valuable was at stake. Despite the efforts of investigators, the truth behind the secret cargo remained a mystery. The weapons were old and seemingly useless, but the crew's behavior suggested that they were hiding something much more valuable. The ship's history of trouble, including previous stops for carrying drugs and ammunition, 
and even an attack by Somali pirates, added to the intrigue. As the diplomatic dispute unfolded, each country denied any wrongdoing. North Korea claimed that the weapons were being sent for repair, while Cuba maintained that they were simply returning old weapons to North Korea. Panama, meanwhile, was left to wonder what else the ship might have been carrying. The Chong Chan gang incident became a strange footnote in history, a reminder that reality can indeed be stranger than fiction. The incident highlighted the complex and often murky world of international shipping and trade, where secrets and lies can be hidden in plain sight. The mystery of the Chong Chan gang may never be fully solved, but it serves as a reminder of the importance of vigilance and transparency in the global shipping industry. For UN investigators to inspect a shipment of suspected weapon parts found on board and said that they uncovered a missile-shaped object. Panama's president, Ricardo Martinelli, tweeted a photo which experts identified as an aging Soviet-built radar control system for surface-to-air missiles. Officials said the contraband munitions were hidden under thousands of bags of sugar. All 35 members of the crew have been arrested after resisting orders and are now being questioned at Fort Sherman, a former U.S. Army base on the Atlantic. Panamanian anti-drug officials told the media that no illicit substances have yet been found on board. At the moment, we haven't found any illicit substances. We have only looked at one out of five storerooms. We don't dismiss the possibility that we could find illicit substances or type of arms or war machinery. U.S. State Department Deputy Spokesman Patrick Ventrell also offered Washington's help to Panama. Let me first of all say that the United States strongly supports Panama's sovereign decision to inspect uh, the DPRK-flagged vessel. The U.S. commends the actions that the government of Panama has taken in this case. Panama, as you know, is a close partner of the United States. We're, we stand ready to cooperate with Panama should they request our assistance. But really, on all, all details of the case, I refer you to the government of Panama. The story of the Hydro Ferry and the fight against the Nazis. In 1944, a Norwegian ferry called Hydro sank to the bottom of Lake Tin, sparking a decades-long mystery. The Allies had suspected that the ferry was carrying a cargo of heavy water, a rare and vital component in the production of atomic bombs. The Nazis were desperate to get their hands on it, and the Allies were determined to stop them. But it wasn't until a team of explorers dove deep into the lake that the truth was finally revealed. Using a state-of-the-art submersible vehicle, the team explored the wreckage of the hydro and found steel drums filled with heavy water. As they delved deeper into the ship, they uncovered a fascinating story of espionage, sabotage, and resistance. The Norwegian resistance had fought bravely to prevent the Nazis from getting their hands on the heavy water, even going so far as to sabotage the factory that produced it. But the Nazis were relentless, and they rebuilt the factory. In a last-ditch effort, the resistance planted a time bomb on the ferry, which exploded on February 20, 1944, sending the ship to the bottom of the lake. The Allies had suspected that the Nazis were close to developing an atomic bomb, and they launched a series of raids to stop them. The sinking of the Hydro was a major blow to the Nazi war effort, and it marked a turning point in the race to develop nuclear weapons. The story of the Hydro Ferry is a thrilling tale of heroes and villains, of courage and determination. It shows that even in the darkest of times, there are those who will risk everything to fight against evil. And it highlights the importance of heavy water in the production of nuclear weapons, a secret that could have changed the course of history. The Tragic Sinking of the El Faro A Cautionary Tale On October 1, 2015, the cargo ship El Faro sank in Hurricane Duacan, resulting in the loss of 33 lives. The U.S. Coast Guard investigated and found that the crew made many mistakes that led to the tragedy. As the storm approached, the crew didn't prepare well and ignored warnings. Captain Michael Davidson didn't have a clear plan and didn't lead the crew effectively, causing confusion and doubt. The crew lacked experience and training, and they didn't consider the ship's weaknesses, such as its age and modifications. They also mismanaged a critical engine system, leading to a catastrophic breakdown. As the ship struggled to stay afloat, the crew was terrified. 
The Voyage data recorder captured their final moments, a haunting reminder of the importance of safety at sea. The crew's cries for help and their failed attempts to save the ship serve as a stark reminder of the dangers of complacency and inadequate training. The El Faro's sinking is a warning to the maritime industry to prioritize safety above all else. While the tragedy led to changes in training and safety protocols, the memory of the El Faro and its crew will never be forgotten. The sinking of the El Faro is a stark reminder of the importance of safety measures and protocols. The crew's lack of preparedness for the hurricane and the ship's inability to withstand extreme weather conditions highlight the need for safety prioritization. This tragic event has affected the maritime industry and emphasizes the importance of vigilance and readiness in hazardous situations. The crew's desperate calls for help during their final moments leave a haunting memory that reinforces the significance of safety at sea. The El Faro tragedy showed that human error can have devastating effects in the maritime industry. The crew's mistakes were not just individual errors, but also resulted from a culture of complacency and lack of training. The captain failed to lead, and the crew lacked experience and training, which was made worse by the ship's owner, Tote Maritime, having a history of safety issues. The incident also highlighted the need for better weather forecasting and emergency preparedness in the maritime industry. The El Faro crew received inaccurate weather forecasts and was unprepared for the storm's severity. The ship was not ready, and the crew's response to the emergency was inadequate, leading to the tragic loss of life. After the tragedy, the U.S. Coast Guard and the National Transportation Safety Board NTSB, issued new safety guidelines for the maritime industry. The International Maritime Organization IMO, also implemented new safety measures, including requiring ships to carry emergency beacons and improving weather forecasting capabilities. The El Faro tragedy is a reminder of the importance of safety at sea and the need for constant improvement in the maritime industry. It also highlights the importance of honoring the memory of those who lost their lives at sea by learning from their sacrifices and working to prevent similar tragedies in the future.